La jaiba quiere pesque para hacer el kimbum bum. Hey. En mi cesto traigo yo acabada de pescar sardinillas, boquerones y una jaiba regular. Si te quieres convencer, todo que voy a enseñar que la jaiba se parece a la mujer. Well, welcome to uh, our 19th annual La Familia. And, um, you know, it's always a pleasure to, to have this program that we started. We started in, in 2003. But let's, uh, let's talk about our sponsors because that's how we get here, right? We get here through our sponsors. And uh, well, one of our main sponsors is Comcast. Right now, the students are here a lot longer part of the day since they're not in school. The lift zone is provided by Comcast. Comcast generously donated broadband internet and 30 laptops so that there was stable connection for all the students here. The Lift Zone is a fantastic place for the kids to go to be safe. They got distance learning help. We are just really, really, really thankful and excited because we will be able to connect. Get fast, reliable internet for any budget. Now qualifying customers can get Xfinity internet free through the Affordable Connectivity Program. That's right, free high-speed internet from Xfinity. And Internet Essentials customers can get equipment included at no extra cost. Get started today. It's so important to support small businesses, especially owned by people of color, because it allows the generations that are coming next to see that this space is available to them. I'm Lucien, and I'm the owner of Revival Training. I'm honored to be selected as a Comcast RISE recipient. The visibility, the marketing that have come with this grant has really been phenomenal and are gonna absolutely take my business to the next level. And so um, we wanna thank them also, also uh, a big supporter of ours, U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank, and here, of course, is our wonderful message from, how about a hand for U.S. Bank, of course. And by the way, uh, it's our 15th anniversary together uh, as partners. They've been sponsors of our events for 15 years. It's been amazing. So how about a hand for U.S. Bank? I mean it. It's amazing. And um, one of my good friends here, one of my good amigos, a, a, a person that's been a real ally of Aguilar Productions, has been Jose Martinez. He's over here. Jose Martinez. With that in mind, I, I'd like to uh, mention our last sponsor, um, and it's NAREP. I went to their opening meeting three years ago, I think it was three years ago, and I was so impressed. Why? This is a group of Hispanic real estate professionals that, if they're successful, will take have, have Latinos be able to purchase that first home. That's the American dream. I said, oh, I have to be involved with this organization. And they're a spirited organization. They work hard. They're invo involved in all of the general market committees. And they're really, uh, they're, they're really a great organization. In their first year, they won the chapter of the year. The, the, I think it was the rookie chapter of the year or something. It was their first year in the business. So let's have a hand. And here's a picture of their board of directors. Yeah, so now rep. So here we are, our awards presentations. And so our first recipient is our friends from Minnesota State Parks and Trails. What you, you might ask why is, a, is, a, is, is it involvement with Hispanic marketing? Well, yeah, because in 2017, I went to a meeting that they put together, uh, invited multicultural media there, and the commissioner of the DNR, Tom Wormer, uh, gave a message that we want these multicultural communities to attend and enjoy the great Minnesota legacy, our parks and trails, our state parks, and our beautiful lakes, and and um, I was. I thought about it myself, and, and, and I thought to myself, I've never been there. I was born and raised in Minnesota. I never went to a state park. Our, you know, in the city, our state park was failing. 
Our, our state park was Como. We, we never said, hey, you know, my pops never said, hey, we're going to Duluth, man. No, no. So we didn't know about it. And they're so beautiful. So I was so struck with that meeting that I went away and told one of the lovely staff people from Minnesota State Parks and Trail that our, our publication, Latino American Today, we wanted to do a monthly article full page. And we're gonna call it Outdoors Minnesota. And we have to this day. And they, and they provide the stories. And yeah, let's see some examples. Here they are. Uh, happier frame of mind. We need. We all need that right now. Yeah. And some others. Uh, Mikala, here's a, another example of what we've done together. So we're very pleased to uh, present them with the Latino Heritage Award today and, and uh, for a great partnership. And believe you me, the Latinos that have gone out and have visited the state parks and trails have enjoyed the hell out of it. They love it. They, the families love it. It's fresh air, it's exercise. And you know, it's really another world when you go there. You're away from the city and you're involved in that wonderful uh, adventure in our parks and trails. So to accept the award uh, is Rachel Hooper. Rachel, come on up, Rachel. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. And uh, I'm gonna read the copy here. In recognition of your outreach efforts to the Latino community, promoting the great Minnesota legacy, our state parks and trails. Also, for being a partner with Latino media, providing monthly articles and photos describing the wonderful outdoor family activities and experiences to enjoy. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Minnesota State Parks and Trails. Congratulations, Rachel. Let's go Thanks, Rick. I am so honored to be here today to accept this award on behalf of the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and to be here among all of you tonight and um, standing among the other award recipients. So this is just an amazing partnership. Uh, we've been working with Rick, who, like he mentioned, has been willing to give space in his amazing publication, Latino American Today, and helping us spread the word of the trying to bring people in to the outdoors and spreading the love of nature to future generations. Why does that matter? Well, there's tons, like Rick mentioned, the health and wellness benefits, but also that these lands are, belong to everyone and they're public lands and we wanna make them, everyone feel safe and welcome and be able to experience the joy and beauty of being outdoors. So thank you so much, Rick. Uh, we've had an amazing partnership to date. Uh, I think we've been working together for, like you said, 2017. I think we've had over 70 articles in Latino American Today. Um, our wonderful, wonderful writer, Deb Lack, has provided the, these wonderful stories and. Again, uh, we just are so appreciative of the partnership and look forward to many more years of this partnership going forward. So thank you, Rick. Thank you. You know, and you know what? They always make the deadlines. I, I, wish, I wish everyone else was like that. Thank you. Well, our first uh, award recipient on the Latino Achievers, um, I'm not using the term leaders, I, I never have. I, I like the term Latino achievers. And uh, Augustine Willie Dominguez, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, uh, Willie and I uh, have been friends for many, many years. Uh, I, I've enjoyed his friendship. I think, I th I think in, in, in a lot of ways, Willie, it, it's been a great friendship. You know, we're from different persuasions politically, and, um, and Willie and I have been able to talk about a lot of things, even including politics, and, 
And I, 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 I appreciate friendships like that. And in, in, in his career, you know, Willie was a, a management consultant for a lot of uh, social services. He, uh, he served as director for mentoring and case management for La Familia Guidance Center. He was assistant to the executive director at the Summer Olson Residence Council and executive director of Central Cultural Chicano. And that's, that was an amazing organization, as well as providing political and fundraising consultation services to other Minnesota agencies. His leadership experience, program management background, and fundraising expertise had given him a clear perspective on the critical issues faced by both the local and state communities and how best to resolve the strategic planning efforts. The last 13 years, Willie Dominguez has been able to bring his rich experience and knowledge to parents and community action. But let's look at another thing Willie's known for. Can I have the next one? Of course. He was a DJ for 20 years. I think it's 20 years, right, Willie, this year? 20-something years with Sábados Alegres, right? He actually let me talk when I did an interview with him. It was, it was amazing. And, uh, and uh, I, 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 really, I really think that, Willie, that uh, that was one of the joys of your life. I might be wrong, man. But, you know, that, uh, and your wife was able to get you out of the house on a say, get out of here. And uh, I think it worked well for everybody. But here's another, another achievement here I think that we should be proud of. I'm proud of it for Willie, is his time with the uh, Minnesota State Representative for District 58B. He was on a variety of legislative committees, including local government and metropolitan affairs, commerce and labor, K-12 finance, and the Subcommittee on Disparities and Student Support Services, where he served as chairperson. And uh, Willie, thank you for your service there. And, and what a learning curve for you to actually, you know, be there making law. So you saw how the sausage was made. You were there. It's not easy, folks, but we want to thank Willie for, for your service and uh, the time you did at the state legislature. So, so Willie Dominguez is a beloved brother, a devoted husband, a proud father, and an extremely proud grandfather. You know, I, I'm, I'm very pleased that we're able to bring up to the stage Willie Dominguez, our Latino Heritage Award recipient. Willie. In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage, culture, and community, and your dedication and leadership to the many civic, political, and social organizations you have led and served. Also for your sharing Latino music with listeners throughout our metro area for the past 20 years through your weekly radio program, Sábados Alegres. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Augustine Willie Dominguez. Well, first of all, I really like to uh, thank each and every one of you for coming out. And uh, this is a big honor in our community, especially myself. And I have to say to my uh, familia, my wife, my, my son, uh, all the way from the Dallas-Fort Worth area is in town. My brother and his wife are here. And all of you, I consider my familia, because that's what we are, familia. That's the way I was brought up. As Rick mentioned, I had 19 in the family, and we had more than that, actually, because we always invited the neighborhood. And so my mom, she was uh, 
she was tough, and so was my dad. So I really want to thank Rick. We ought to give it up for Rick, really, because he's put this together. Uh, even though we sit on a different uh, political arenas, uh, he's all right. He's a brother. And uh, that's what we have to m put into ourselves that, you know, you might be on different parties uh, campaigning for different individuals, but we come together as familia, as Latinos, Mexicanos. We really do. And we have to show more of that because we got to be leaders. We ne just can't sit back and, and uh, let our kids, because those youth that we see, I hope to see them up here and getting awards and, and having a speech to us again. Uh, I got grandkids, as he mentioned, and uh, I want to see them survive as well as you. But today is a special day for me because I can, I can see what is going on uh, with La Familia, this organization, how it's grown. Uh, 19 years is a lot of years, and Rick has stepped up and and prove that we can do this together. Um, so, but I gotta say one thing other, it's uh, 43 years in your ears with Salas Alegres. This will be my 43rd year being, being that, uh, so. But then again, I have to thank my wife for letting me go out the door to do this. And, uh, you know, she's been by my side all the time. My son, he also was on the program uh, doing Salas Alegres and did a well, good job there. But then I only got another minute because Rick said, don't talk too much, Willie, because you're not on radio. So again, gracias a Dios. We got to give thanks to God uh, of, of having us and to show that we can do things together and I hope we stay together as community. We know we can, but we just have to do it. So gracias again to all of you who came out. What's well, guys a Dick Clark of radio, man? At 43 years, what was 23 years you just got started. Thanks, Willie. Get me on the show soon, would you? The checks in the mail. Thanks, Willie. Well, you know, I, I, uh, it, uh, the award thing is, is it's amazing that it's so much fun to be able to, to honor our, our, our friends and um, Latino achievers. As part of our awards, we always make sure that we honor and uh, talk about our Latino peace officers. Now, our Recipient today, uh, Rico Geary, well, he's the president of the National Latino Peace Officers Association, the Minnesota chapter. And that organization is amazing. It really is. I've been involved with it for many years, and we've honored other, other presidents uh, of, of the chapter. But um, Rico was born and raised in St. Paul. He was, his parents uh, immigrated to, uh, to Minnesota from Mexico. He attended uh, Harding High School before heading off to college. He earned a bachelor's degree in law enforcement and later a master's degree in management. He joined the National Latino Peace Officers Association in 20, 2003 as a student. He was hired by the Woodbury Police Department, later the St. Paul Police Department. He is a sergeant with the St. Paul Police Department today. He's now the president of the Minnesota chapter. And they're a great chapter, one of the best in the country. So um, you can see some of the, the national officers here. You know, what, a, what an amazing group. Uh, they had their national convention here recently. And they're an amazing group. Again, this is a, this is a, a, a hard business to be in now. Um, it's, it's a dangerous business. And they're doing it for you. It's, it's much like the military, uh, where they're serving their country and, and they'll put their lives at stake to, to do their work. And I'm, I'm so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, proud of, of what they do. Uh, and you can see here, R Rico is uh, always involved with uh, 
here's the membership group. Here's a group here, uh, as I said, a, a great group of people, and we're so happy to have them. And here's some of the work they do, uh, raising dollars for Hennepin Tech and, and making sure that uh, they're out there involved in the community. Uh, we could have an endless amount of photos of the work they do. So uh, it's a really an honor uh, to uh, bring up Rico Aguirre as our 2022 Hispanic Heritage Award winner. Rico, come on up, buddy. In recognition for representing law enforcement with the utmost honor and dignity making the city safe for all communities and your efforts promoting the vision and goals of the National Latino Peace Officers Association. Also for your commitment to your heritage, culture, and country. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Rigo Aguirre, President, National Latinos Peace Officers Association, Minnesota chapter. Thank you, I'll uh, stand on this side of the podium, the height issue. So I appreciate this award from La Familia and what a great name, family. And uh, it's more than that though. It's, it's an organization, it's an institution, it's, it's something that people with a common bond come together. Whether it's belief, whether it's being born into it, uh, heritage, um, getting married into it. But this bond, that, this treasure that we have being Latino is something that brings us all together as family. The National Latino Peace Officer Association is very similar, a faction of being Latino, just happen to be cops. Professional law enforcement with community support. We, we strive to diversify law enforcement, diversify the ranks, and really bridge that gap between the community and law enforcement. The Minnesota chapter started 20 years ago. 20, 2002. Just like any family, they had a vision, had goals. People got together, they made a decision, they signed some paperwork and began that family. Like any good Latino family, you gotta start bringing in some kids, some babies. I was lucky enough to be at the forefront of that. Being in school and seeing one of these members reach out to me and bring me into this NLPOA. The NLPOA has given me mentorship, guidance, love, family. Okay. I, appreci I, I stand humbled here, starting as a student and now being president of this organization. So I thank La Familia for this award, and I thank my familia. Thank you. Thanks, Rigo. Very well said, my friend. Thank you very much. And again, uh, we, we've supported the, the organization for many years, and we're looking forward to your continuation of, of your outstanding efforts. Thank you. Uh, our, our next uh, recipient is a gentleman that uh, has been publishing articles that we've all read in the, in the St. Paul Pioneer Press. I was uh, just speaking to Ruben before we, we started the program tonight, and I just said it was, uh, we never connected all these years. Uh, it's a small town, you know, St. Paul's four blocks. It's, it's a small town. We could have bumped into each other at the store, man. I, I, I can't believe it, but it happens. But what an amazing um, opportunity we've had to, to have Ruben here 
as a journalist, a columnist, and, and now an author. Uh, Ruben Rosario is a veteran newspaper journalist who wrote an award-winning column for the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and raised in New York City, Rosario spent 11 years as a staff writer for the New York Daily News, covering some of the biggest and most notorious crime stories and court cases in the nation's largest city. In 1986, Rosario wrote Journey into the Den of Lost Souls. This front page newspaper accounted, documented the emergence and devastation of crack cocaine in Harlem and poor cities in the neighborhoods. The expose earned him praise from local politicians and the New York Police Department. Rosario joined the Pioneer Press in 1991. That's gotta be a, a book in itself, how you, 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 you reach Minnesota here, but maybe that's another story. But in 1991, he worked five years as the city editor and public safety team leader. He also established and coordinated several newsroom internship programs designed to increase the presence of up and coming journalists including those from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups. Rosario launched the award-winning column in 1997. He was named the finalist for the 2008 American Society of Newspaper Editors Bantam Medal. He also won more than eight first place column writing awards in the annual Minnesota Society of Professional Journalists page one competitions during his career. In 2020, the organization honored Rosario with his first ever Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, Ruben left full-time employment with the Pioneer Press in April of 2020 after 29 years. He still writes an occasional column for the newspaper Deadline Minnesota, a collection of his favorite columns was also published in 2020. Uh, Ruben is a longtime member of the National Association of Hispanic Journalists. He is co-founder and treasurer of the Criminal Justice Journalists, a Washington, D.C.-based national organization of crime and reporters. Now, we do have a video of his Lifetime Achievement Award. Could we play that, McKayla? Ruben Rosario is the columnist every editor should be blessed to have. I received my blessing at the Pioneer Press from 2005 to 2011. Ruben, in many ways, was a throwback to the great columnists of yesteryear, made his bones with the New York Daily News, the cop shops of the city, writing about the mob. But he was no stereotype of a tough guy columnist. Ruben has empathy, a dedication to trying to get all sides of his story, and a deep commitment to doing it right. Latest Jacob Wetteling rumor? I wanted Ruben on it. I-35 bridge collapse, I wanted Reuben on it. Vikings took a cruise on the love boat, Reuben. When a police officer was killed or did the killing, I wanted Reuben on it. George Floyd, damn right I'd want Reuben on it. Plus, when Reuben was reporting a story, I didn't have to wonder what he was asking sources during telephone interviews. I could hear it. In my office, door shut. I used to wonder why Reuben even used the telephone. Great choice, Minnesota SPJ. But the lifetime isn't over, neither are the achievements. Go get them, Ruben. So it's a, a pleasure to introduce the 2022 Latino Heritage Award recipient, Ruben Rosario. In recognition of your impactful career as a journalist, author, and award-winning columnist, also for your love of writing and love of listening that combined 
meet for an incredible conduit for your stories, the pride and respect for your Latino heritage and culture shows through in your life. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Ruben Rosario. Muchas gracias por ustedes venir aquí. Un placer y un honor para recibir este premio. It's a pleasure to be here uh, to receive this honor. I'm uh, very appreciative of Rick Aguilar, who I've never met until today. Um, hopefully, it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. I don't know. But I'm going to keep this short because this guy's the godfather of Gab as I found out. So yeah, I'd rather have him listen to him. But uh, when I was a little kid uh, growing up in the South Bronx, my single mother would take me occasionally to go to the local movie theater. And there I was exposed to quite a number of Mexican films uh, with Vicente Fernandez, Miguel Aceves Mejia, and I remember at the end of these films, I would walk up the aisles thinking that I was Miguel Aceves Mejia with his flashy uniform and his pistols. And I asked my mom, hey, mom, are we Mexican? Because I want to be a Mexican. And she goes, well, you can be a Mexican for a little while, you know? But uh, what we just saw here tonight was a celebration, a mosaic. And even within one country, you can see many different customs and many different multicultural traditions in just one country. So Latinos, we're not monolithic by any means. We're a rich tapestry of a lot of uh, beautiful people. We're bonded by our Latino heritage. And so one other thing I want to say is that in my 43 years in newspaper journalism, I never made anything up. I always check my sources, and in an age when some people regard journalists as the enemy of the people, I never felt that way. I always felt we were the crusaders for the people. As Jimmy Breslin, one of my mentors, used to say, and do by deed, our best goal and our noble profession is to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. And I hope I was able to do that throughout my career. Muchas gracias y buenas noches. Well, thank you, Ruben. And um, I'll call you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you buy me lunch, man. Thank you, Ruben. Well, our, our, our next award, Colonel Eduardo A. Swart. You know, I met, I met Ed, I think you remember this. Um, we were working with the, we've had the pleasure to work with the National Guard for many years. Uh, and we did some great work. Uh, general Rick Nash, who was an adjunct general for many years. This man was committed to Latino recruitment. Very committed. And as a result, uh, several years ago, we gave him the Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award for leading the country in recruitment of Latinos. I think that's worthy of a hand, uh, the National Guard here. Because if you're a, if you're a young Latino or Latina in, in high school, you don't have any goals, you're not knowing what you're gonna do, that guard is special for you and it pays for your college education. It's a, it's a real hell of a deal and that's why I got along so good with the guard. I believe in that program. I think it's a hell of a program. So, you know, we're here, we're here tonight to, to honor Eduardo Suarez, Colonel Suarez, for his recent promotion as Director of Communications for the Minnesota National Guard, his, his first Latino to serve in that position. That's why we're here, that's where they've been hand, the first Latino. Eduardo has served in the military 
for 33 years. He's accomplished much, obviously, to get the rank and serve tours in Iraq, and he went over defending our country. But tonight, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we're very proud here at uh, Aguilar Productions in La Familia to introduce our La Familia 2022 Latino Heritage Award winner, Colonel Eduardo Suarez. <laughs> Colonel Suarez. In recognition of your leadership role with the Minnesota National Guard as Director of Communications, the first Latino American to serve in that position. Also for 33 years of service to your country, joining the ranks of thousands of Latino Americans who serve in the Guard throughout America, answering the call always ready, always there. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this accommodation is presented to Colonel Eduardo A. Suarez. Congratulations, Eduardo. Thank you, Rick, very much. I. Uh... Gosh, 33 years, I'd never imagined I'd be on the stage uh, doing this. Uh, you know, never mind the, the history and how I got here. I know it's important, but uh, you know, what do you do with that at this point? I think as leaders, uh, we have an obligation uh, to make the next version of myself. And I'm here with many of my peers from the National Guard here with, from our Special Emphasis Council that focuses primarily on making sure we elevate our Latino, Latino service members in the Minnesota Guard to the next level. I feel like that's my calling now, is to champion their cause, to be an example for them. Um, if my mother and father were here, I'd, I'd thank them for the many Sotomonas and the Coscoronas, making sure I was on the right track. Um, and like you said, my mom made the right decision back that, you know, 40 years ago to, to get me involved in something bigger than myself. Uh, so I'm grateful for the opportunity, more importantly humbled, be here with so many other recipients for the, what they've done in their lives. Uh, I, I promise you this won't go without extra hard work behind me to ensure I can pass it along to someone else. But um, thank you for the honor today, and I'm proud to be part of this community here in Minnesota. Thank you. Thanks, Eduardo. And, uh, Looking forward to working with your group. Uh, I think the, I'm not sure if recruitment's down, I sort of asked you if we could use some more, okay. So we're gonna move on now because uh, our, our favorite part or our favorite part of our awards has always been, you know, honoring our musicians. You know, we have so many talented musicians uh, here in the cities. Um, last year, if you'll remember, we honored a jazz icon drummer, George Avalaz. Now here's George, he's 80 years old now. He lives in, in, uh, in St. Paul. A man that played with Miles Davis and Count Basie and, and played all over New York and Europe. And, and this is an amazing career. And he's back here and he still plays. He, he's still very talented. So we love honoring our, our, our musical artists and. Uh, and uh, Kiko Rangel, who performed tonight. You know? And so tonight, uh, it's, no, it's no exception. Uh, we have uh, Donna Pena. Now, Donna is, 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 is such a remarkable artist, but uh, I, I think back on her family because her, her grandmother and grandfather, they were my padrinos, they baptized me. So that the Augie, and Augie Garcia, the godfather of rock and roll in Minnesota, that's her uncle. And I remember uh, Donna being over at their, at their house. And uh, Augustine, I believe, was the father, right? The grandfather. He was a guitar player and his brother. And they were jamming and all the Latino things and Augie and a lot of great memories. But now I see where you, you have your love of music being around and then being around the West Side. But all those talented. Uh, artists 
And um, Donna's been in some manner or other a resident of the Mexican community of St. Paul. She was born in the West Side Flats, went to Sunday school at Our Lady Guadalupe Church, and later moved to the Midway area of St. Paul. Graduated from the University of Minnesota with a BA in Chicano Studies and studied music for two years at the U and then moved back into the West Side area where she served 18 years as the music director of Our Lady Guadalupe. She began another career while at Guadalupe, that of a composer, arranger, and producer of her music, which has traveled throughout the United States and beyond South and overseas. She is one of the pioneers of published bilingual music for Spanish English speaking congregations in the US. She has an extensive reach in the many genres of music, including American folk, Latino mariachi, jazz, Mexican folklore, to name a few. Here's a, a couple of samples of her recordings. And uh, her husband, Pedro, Lara, the daughter. What an amazing, I was at a Cinco de Mayo um, event a few years ago, and they were performing just amazing voices. And I, I, I sing myself. I was in the business for 30 years. So I'm a little critical, you know, I guess. But they're amazing, man. It was like angels. And uh, uh, I was so impressed. And then. I have to admit this, Don. I went home and I I, I Googled you because I, I wasn't following your work, man. So I I saw it, wow, what an, what an amazing um, creative career you've had. And um, I know you're known throughout the country and the world for your music, so I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it is for me uh, being from the same neighborhood to see what you have accomplished. So um, I'm really proud to say that our, our 2022 recipient of the Latino Heritage Award, Dania Pena. In recognition of your commitment and passion for your Latino heritage, culture, and community, also for your successful creative career as a singer, composer, and producer, performer, performing uplifting music that raised the spirits of Latinos and others throughout the world, you are a source of pride. So with the appreciation of the Latino community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Donna Pena, singer, composer, producer extraordinaire. come up and, and try to talk, I, my ADD kicks in and then I don't go anywhere except in a circle. So, um, hello and thank you for this recognition from the Hispanic community. It is an honor that I share with my family over there at table four and table 10, with my family and friends here who've been with me every step of the way through many journeys that I have taken in this endeavor. It is because of them that I'm here today. I have been blessed in my life with music and culture. The music, well, I grew up with uncles like Augie Garcia and, and Bobby Rocky Garcia and Peter. My mom, she used to sing on the radio. My dad's family is musical. My, my dad's father used to play with Lydia Mendoza when she came into town. In, in the valley, down in the valley. Um, 
I dove into American folk, jazz, mariachi, Mexican folkloric, spiritual music. I think I've tried almost everything and in many, many different languages. Um, culture, I learned from my home life, then through studies at the University of Minnesota and Chicano studies, and then through the community of Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, who helped shape my person as to the stories, spirituality, struggles, and traditions of the Mexican community. I will always treasure these experiences, and I hope to pass them on to my family. While always being a writer of song and music, necessity breeds creativity, the old saying. And it is this Guadalupe community that I began to write for, trying to bridge English and Spanish and to tell stories surrounding my people, the Mexicanos. I now sing the songs of my grandfathers, the songs of my father, my family, and the songs I create today. So again, I thank you. Paz y amor. I oftentimes play with, um, we used to play in a mariachi band together, my husband and, and my daughter. And, um, and then we kind of broke up from there and then just started playing as a trio or, or a quartet. Once in a while, except my other son went into heavy metal, so he kind of <laughs> departed from us. <laughs> I don't think the, the Latino music was cut out for growling. <laughs> so we're going to do a song. It's not one of mine, but it's one of the songs that, um, that I learned. Actually, the first time I heard it was with Lydia Mendoza. Um, one of her old, old recordings, and, um, and then later on with Celia Cruz. So we're just going to kind of do our single guitar plum shaker version of it. That's the plum. <laughs> this is Laura. Hi, nice to meet you. La yo soy, quiero que me compre usted. La jaiba quiero pesque. Para ser el king boom boom. Hey. En mi cesto traigo yo, acabada de pescar sardinillas, boquerones y una jaiba regular. Si te quieres convencer, todo que voy a enseñar que la jaiba se parece a la mujer. En mi cesto traigo yo, acabada de pescar sardinillas, boquerones y una jaiba regular. Si te quieres convencer en que te voy a enseñar que la jaiba se parece a la mujer. Yo traigo sabrosa jaiba, revuelta con camarón, para hacerle con pescadito y un platillo de frijol. Si quieres comer jaibita, acabada de pescar, ven conmigo a mi casita, que te voy a convidar. Que te pica la jaiba, donde mamá la jaiba se va, no vuelve. Que te pica la jaiba, donde mamá la jaiba se va, no vuelve. Ay, ay, ay. Sardinillas, boquerones y una jaiba regular. Si te quieres convencer, todo que voy a enseñar que la jaiba se parece a la mujer. Yo traigo sabrosa jaiba, revuelta con camarón, para hacerle con pescadito y un platillo de frijol. Si quieres comer jaibita, Acabada de pescar, ven conmigo a mi casita, que te voy a convidar, que te pica la jaiba donde mamá, que te pica la jaiba donde mamá.
Is that right? That was amazing music. Thank you, Donna. Thank you very much, Laura. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, when's your next gig? We'll, we'll come and hear you. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you very much. Uh, our, our sponsors are back for next year. So we'll be back next year with uh, our multicultural marketing conferences and our other events. And then this event. Next year, we'll have the 20th annual La Familia. So um, thank you very much. It's been great. Uh, one quiz before we leave, OK? Whoever gets it right, you're a very smart person. Who started Hispanic Heritage Month? Any, any, anyone? Who started Hispanic Heritage Month? Well, the answer is it was started by Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson in, in 1968, but he, he started it as Hispanic Heritage Week, week. So Ronald Reagan in 1988 wrote into law that it would be extended to a month because, you know, Ronald was, from, was governor of California. And are there any Latinos living in California? Yeah, there's a few. And he loved those Latinos. You know, I, I had the pleasure of meeting Ronald Reagan in the White House, and he told us Latinos are Republicans, they just don't know it yet. But, but he told us how he felt about Latinos, and, 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 and listen to this, he said, you know, the Latinos could be the saviors of this country for their work ethic, for their traditions, for the love of family. And, and you know, I'm starting to think he could be right down the line. So stay in the Latinos. Happy to hear it this month. It's been a pleasure. And um, I'm going to go across the street and have a double at the St. Paul Grill. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Did you get that book, Willie? There's Willie. Yeah, there's that. All right. Well, now the microphone works. <laughs> Soy un hombre muy honrado que me gusta lo mejor. Las mujeres no me faltan ni el dinero ni el amor. Cabalgando en mi caballo por la sierra siempre voy. Y la luna y las estrellas me acompañan donde voy. Ay, 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 mi amor, ay, mi morena de mi corazón. Ay, 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 mi amor, ay, mi morena de mi corazón.